Welcome to the Somme Vigil podcast series, which tells the story of the Battle of the Somme in the words of those who were there. I'm Simon Bendry, Director for UCL Institute of Education's First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours programme. This series was commissioned by the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport and developed in partnership with the First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours programme and Chrome Radio. It was first released to accompany the Somme 100 Vigil at Westminster Abbey, held through the night of the 30th of June and into the morning of the 1st of July 2016, to mark the centenary of the Battle of the Somme. In this podcast, we hear from a munitionette. On the home front, women were playing their part in the war effort. The demand for shells created new job opportunities. British industry had converted to war production and women provided the unskilled labour in the munitions factories. Mrs Adela Hall had come to London to help with the war effort. By early 1916 she had started work at Perivale National Filling Factory in the London borough of Lewisham. She later recalled what it was like to work there. I had never been in a factory before but the crisis made you think. I thought, well, my brothers and their friends are in France. So a friend and I thought to ourselves, well, let's do something. So we went to London to ask for war work and we were directed to Perivale in London. We had to have a health examination because you had to be very physically fit, have perfect eyesight and be strong. We had to supply four references and be British-born and have British parents. We worked ten hours a day, no break, an hour for dinner, back again until half past six, no break. We single girls found it very difficult to eat after work because the shops were closed. When we finished work, we had to do our work and try to get food, which was difficult. I remember going into a shop after not having milk for seven days. They said, if you can produce a baby, you can have the milk. That was it. I went into a butcher's shop to get some meat because we were just beginning to get rationed and I said, that looks like cat, and he said, it is, I couldn't face that. It was a perfect factory to work in. Everybody seemed unaware of the powder around them, unaware of any danger. Once we heard, oh so-and-so has gone. Perhaps she had made a mistake and her eye was out, but there wasn't any big explosion whilst I was there. We worked at making these little pellets, very innocent-looking things, but if there had been the slightest bit of grit in these pellets, it would have been goodbye. We had to do a fortnight on and a fortnight off. It was terribly hard, terrible monotonous, but we had a purpose. There wasn't a drone in that factory, and every girl worked and worked and worked. I didn't hear one grumble and hardly ever heard of one that stayed home because she had her man in mind, although we all did. After each day when we got home, we had a lovely good wash, and believe me, the water was blood red and our skin was perfectly yellow, right down through the body, legs and toenails even, perfectly yellow. In some people, it caused a rash, a real nasty rash all round the chin. It was a shame, as we were a bevy of beauties and these girls objected very much to that. Yet, amazingly, even though we could do nothing about it, They still carried on, and some of them with rashes about half an inch thick. It didn't seem to do them any harm, just for skin. The hair, if it was fair or brown, went a beautiful gold, but if it was grey, it went grass green. It was quite twelve months after we left the factory before the yellow came out from our bodies. Washing wouldn't do anything, it only made it worse. Adela Hall died in 1985 aged 91. You have been listening to The Story of the Somme, a Chrome Radio production for the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport, in partnership with UCL Institute of Education's First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours programme. The producer was Katrina Oliphant. In the next podcast... We hear about preparations for the Battle of the Somme.